and I'm from Toronto, Canada. And this is a podcast where I'm talking about knitting, other crafts, yarn, fiber related, um, natural dyeing, and uh, my sourdough adventures with bread and other bakes. Um, so welcome. Uh, today I have a few things to show you. Um, mostly knitting and natural dyeing, a little bit of sewing, and not so much bread, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, but yeah, let's jump into it. My first whip is uh, some socks for my son. Um, it's his birthday soon, so I decided to make him uh, some socks. He wears them a lot, so uh, he's sock knitting worthy. <laughs> um uh these are the yarn is uh, leftovers from socks i made for my friend uh it's Peyton screw uh croy sorry um and the pattern is uh, uh the skip socks by andrea Koo, i think um all the information about everything that i talk about uh, will be linked below so any patterns yarns um, i have a ravelry page for it so i'll just link to that and you can see all the information I'm kneading it on 2.25 uh, needles uh, and uh, the contrasting yarn is some sock yarn I had that I over dyed with onion skins and maybe something else. It was like this kind of similar to this color, like the light gray blue and I over dyed it and that's, I have another pair of socks in that and that's just what's left over. It kind of, I guess, <laughs> goes back to this orange stripe there um, and I'm using an afterthought heel from another pattern that I can't remember right now but it will be linked uh, in the pattern notes on the Ravelry page for this it's it's really clever it's a free pattern uh, but it's really clever because it has a gasset in it for the afterthought heel and it just makes it work because before it didn't used to work for me the afterthought heel it would with the stitches here kind of like stretch out when i would wear the sock um, but now with this and what i also with this it doesn't happen and what i also really like is that the head is in the instructions it says to put like the two lifelines for the stitches you're gonna pick up later which is really neat because it makes it so much easier <laughs> to pick up the stitches uh, once you take out the waist yarn so i'm almost done on this i already cut off the yarn I'm gonna put the toe and yeah the sky pattern is really nice I actually need my pair with this yarn um, uh, yeah I really I really I'm really drawn right now to patterns like that that are kind of like simple sock patterns but they have some interesting detail and that they're ribbed I really like that because that gives more stretch and it's more comfortable to wear and it's really good for gift meeting because if you can try it as you go it's usually going to fit if there's a rib in it. Um, and I really like how it looks on self-striping as well. So, um, yeah, I'm really pleased. <laughs> you can see here how the yarn looks without the pattern. Um, yeah, really happy with that. Almost done with this one. I'm probably going to do the second one and then put the heels in. It's really fun to need socks for kids. Uh, it's going to be four. So it's pretty sh pretty quick uh, whip. And it's a nice break. break from my must-have cardigan, which is blocking right now. Well, it, it's soaking and soon to be blocking. Um, so I'll insert some pictures here. I finished the two fronts. And now I just need to block it, sew, the, sew, sew it all up, and then just do the, the bend of the fold. Whenever I'm podcasting, I'm forgetting everything what it's called for some reason. Usually I do remember the button bend, right? And the collar, like it goes all the way around. Um, so yeah, it's really simple, like I think two by two rib or something like that. Uh, so yeah, hopefully next time I'll have it finished, I'll be wearing it. And it's not even, I thought I'll, I'll finish it by the end of March, but it's not even, it's probably going to be just the end of February. Oh, it would be nice to finish it for my birthday at the end of February and to wear it on my birthday. Uh, yeah, I'm really excited and I'm still going to have lots of yarn left. Uh, the cardigan is made out of uh, like yarn I, I, I broke from a sweater I bought at thrift stores. Recycled yarn. 
Um, and uh, it's wool yarn because when I was dyeing some other yarn with for natural dyeing, I was tying the knots with some of this yarn because it was handy, it was nearby, so I just got some from it for the ties. And it dyed up so nice. It just looks really nice with the darker. I'll show you maybe one thing. So in case nobody remembers what I'm talking about, um, it's this yarn. So you can see how it's um, it's two strands of the white wool and one strand of the brown wool. And when when the the dye really only goes only the white wool one, you can see that it takes the dye. Um, the brown doesn't really show much of the dye, obviously. And it just looks really cool and really nice. So um, I'm not sure what to do with it. I thought it would be nice for a head, but it's kind of scratchy, so I don't know. I haven't decided what to do. I, I really haven't decided. I don't know 100% what I'll do with it. I also have been thinking that uh, I always wanted to cross-stitch lots of, lots of pictures and stuff for my apartment um, to put on the walls, but that takes forever, and I'm kind of, like right now, I can only, I only have so much time, so cross-stitch has kind of been put to the side. And um, I was thinking maybe like some weaving or even weave, weaving, weaving, you know, when you weave, <laughs> or some knitted pieces that you can kind of mount or something like that and put on the wall. So maybe with this yarn, I don't know, maybe I'll use it for like a sweater for one of the kids as like part of it. I really like those... Um, the anchor sweater and cardigan. Um, I really love them. I love the sweater. I don't have the cardigan pattern yet, but I probably will get it. I even want to make one for myself with like the kids' version from the worsted weight or like the two fingering held together. I think I could pull like the biggest size and just need a longer, if anything. Um, because I saw the adult version, it's um, like it's really, it's from thinner yarn and I don't know, I don't like it much as it looks. I like like, <laughs> I like it. I think it's also more pleated on the adult, in the adult pattern. But for the kids, I really like how it's kind of like there's more space. It's not like very fitted, and it looks really cozy and nice. So I like both of those patterns, like the broken rib uh, part and the fit. So uh, yeah, I really like using all kinds of like other yarns for the like alternating skeins or marling or whatever uh, for the. Not skins, alternating really different, like just having different color bands for the broken rib. So yeah, maybe for that, maybe for something else, who knows. But yeah, I'm really happy that I have so much left, it's really cool. Um, so that's the must-have cardigan. I knit it on 4.5mm needles. I think it's a worsted weight. Uh, and more notes are on the rubber page. And it'll be linked below. And the next thing I have to talk about is a finished object. <laughs> So I made one of those um, advent meetings I was talking about last time with the yarn I dyed. Uh, the blue one is black beans and well, the white is just a natural color. Um, it's Briggs and Little Sport. Uh, it's very rustic yarn. <laughs> I feel funny saying rustic now because I feel like it's a trendy word everybody uses. Uh, it's really nice, uh, the yarn. I knit it on two and a half millimeter needles and I feel like maybe I should have done a size up or Maybe I just need to get better at knitting the color work. It looked awful before I blocked it. Now it looks a little bit better. Uh, but of course, um, the side with the one, which is how you would kind of put it, or I guess maybe like that, I don't know, uh, is where the pattern came out worse. So like here, you can see I'm kind of missing. And, and here it's kind of really tight. But if you look at the back, like the pattern just looks much better. <laughs> Uh, blocking definitely helped, but yeah, it's still not there. I, I'm also thinking I thought that would be a great way to practice uh, color work, for like in preparation to knit a cardigan or a sweater. But now I'm thinking that maybe that's the other way around because I think it's much neater, much easier to knit color work in the round, like on circular needles, round and round and round, and kind of get the hang of it rather than do it doing it on. 40 pms, which is how I usually need mittens and socks and things like that. Um, I can't bring myself to try the nine inch circulars. <laughs> just I can see that it's not gonna. Maybe I should try it. I don't know, but it seems really difficult to me. Uh, so I don't know. I'll try more. I was also, also thinking to try maybe knitting on 275, 2.75 millimeters for the next mitten, 
but I'm afraid that then it will be too big. Like I already feel like it's too big. It could fit. It my hand almost fits into it, and my kid's hand would fit into it. So I thought they would be like like up to here, kind of, you know, like this big. So I'm not sure if I want it to be even bigger if I need it on the 275, but maybe the stitches would look nicer. So I'm kind of contemplating if I should need the next one on bigger needles and then just pick whichever size looks best and need the rest of them on that size. I don't know, I really like the pattern for this one. The instructions are really simple. Um, it's really easy to follow. It's, uh, I forgot the name, but I'll have it linked. Uh, so it's the Advent Calendar Mittens, 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 something like that. Um, and like I said in the previous uh, episode, I have, I need to need 31 of them because I'm doing like Advent for New Year's. So I'll definitely repeat this pattern because it's just like very wintry, probably even with these colors. Um, uh, it's just really nice wintry Nordic, I guess, pattern. Um, and I really enjoyed the pattern. Um, although, you know, that's kind of a lie. Like the, I mean, the, 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 the schematics of the color work, um, it did require a lot of really long floats, which I kept catching. And I feel like uh, the next pattern, what I liked, in like the color, the pattern for the second maiden, it doesn't have such long floats. It seems like the colors are much, the changes in colors are much closer to each other. It's every couple of stitches or something like that most of the time. So then it's much easier, I think. Maybe that would also help with, so maybe the next one I will need also two and a half and I see how it goes and if it still looks really bad <laughs> or as bad as this one, <laughs> then I would do the next one on the 275 millimeters um, yeah but this yarn is like really perfect for color work because you can basically just put two strands of yarn together and they kind of stick so sometimes it was even making it harder because it would kind of like end up having it getting me too tight because of that if that makes sense because I, before I usually need color work on smoother yarns and then it would be the opposite problem, like it was too loose. And I never understood what they say, you need to go needle size up to need color work because you tend to need it too tight because I was like, no, my problem is always too loose. But with this, it really was like that. So um, I guess I guess I will try one more than 225, uh, two, two and a half, and then, then I'll see. So yeah, I'm pretty pleased I have one, but I definitely won't have all of them by the end of the year. But um, I, I thought, how many I would have, that's how many I would use. And I was also thinking if I should do like the thing, um, the little knot thing to hold it on. And I figured I wouldn't because let's, like, I'll just, I would be hanging them by those um, clothesline pins. So I might as well just pin it like this, right? I don't see the need for like more work on it. Um, yeah, so that's this. And then the other finished sort of almost object I want to show you is actually sewing. So for the longest time, I think since my son was born, so that's like four years ago, I haven't taken out my sewing machine because it's kind of loud and he's like the kind of kid who gets into everything. And whenever he sleeps, I put it because it's so loud. Whenever he's not, then it's just he would get into it and then like get touch it and stuff. <laughs> I was worried. And um, I, whenever he wasn't here, I would have other stuff I had to do. So. Um, yeah, but then my friend asked me uh, to sew something for her and I figured, okay, I'll try. And it was actually good. I got it out when he was here and my daughter was here too. And they both just really enjoyed looking at me sewing. They did try to touch stuff, but when I told them no, they kind of listened and didn't touch too much. So I was really pleased uh, and just worried that, or maybe it's not a worry. Like they seem to kind of be bored with it already. <laughs> so um, I'm not sure how they'll react next time. If they'll want like me doing it because they would want the attention or I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I'm really happy that I, first of all, that it was still working, that I managed to sew, and that was really quick. Um, and I'm thinking a while ago, I bought like, this huge carton to make reusable uh, grocery bags. And I started doing them by hand because I was like, oh, I can't get the machine. And I did a few by hand, and it's just, it's really <laughs> labor intensive. It's really annoying. I don't like sewing by hand too much. I always think that I'll be okay with it, but then I'm like sitting and sewing, and I'm like, I'd much rather be knitting <laughs> and um, so I kind of like left it and I still have lots of fabric and it's kind of a waste so 
uh, I'm thinking to get back to it and maybe do like a bag in a couple of days or whatever. And then, so we have enough because I feel like I have those few bags and the first, my husband is usually the one who goes grocery shopping. So he would use some of them. He, he would use them at the beginning, but then they kind of fell, but then because he still had to buy or use like, you know, those cheap little ones, like not cheap, I'm sorry, like the thin, thin ones, you put like some, your, your, what's it called? Your produce in, right? The produce bags, that's what I was looking for. Um, so he would still have to use them because he wouldn't have enough of the reusable ones. Then he just kind of stopped using the reusable ones and using the other ones all the time. And they fell to the bottom of the bag. And I was asking, like, why didn't you use them when I unpacked the groceries? And he's like, oh, yeah, I forgot. So I feel like if all of them were just, if he had enough of the reusable ones, he wouldn't, he would get used to using them and he wouldn't use the other ones anymore, which is the goal. <laughs> so, so yeah, I'm thinking I might get on to that or try. I really enjoyed sewing on the machine. It's, it's so quick and it's kind of fun. Um, so this is what I made. So... I didn't quilt the whole thing, so I basically found those two pieces of quilt, the fabrics, I guess quilt blocks, um, in my stash when I was looking for fabric for what my friend asked me. I'll, I'll explain in a second what it is. And I um, I just thought, like, oh, I might as well use it, because I think, I don't know what I was going to do with it, probably maybe a pillow or something, but I kind of fell, fell out of love with it because I'm not sure why, maybe, maybe I fell off continue some other time. Um, so it's really her colors. So I thought it would be perfect. So what she wanted is basically make it like a warm well, water bowl. That's how she calls it. But really what she wants to do is put beans inside and then warm it in the microwave and then use it as a warm water bowl. Um, yeah, so she's gonna put beans in it and close it. And yeah, so I basically, all I did was sew the thing all the way around and leave this little opening here. Uh, but I did have to do it twice because the first time I <laughs> sewed the wrong way. I mean, I put like both parts the wrong way, basically. And I, one one side was, looked like the, the back side. So I felt like I'm doing so well. And then I finished like everything and I just had like this part left where I would have to leave the opening. So I turned it around on the other side because it would have been easier to sew the opening from the other side. And then I realized that I did it all, all wrong and <laughs> I didn't have time to unpick because it was dinner time almost, so I had to put it aside. It was really annoying. But once I unpicked it at night after they went to sleep, it was okay. Um, so, so yeah, that, that really made me want to sew more. I always dream about like sewing my own wardrobe and everything, but I'm just not that good at it. But I feel it's like one of those things it comes with the more you do it, the better you get, right? But my problem is mainly that like, it's not like I know some people that have like a dedicated space where they can put their sewing machine and it's out there and every time they have time they can come and do a little bit of something. But for me, I have to always store it. So, and I don't, yeah, like I said, it's kind of loud. So I can't do it when they're sleeping, which is when I would want to do it to focus on it. And I can't really do a lot when they're around. Like this was pretty simple, like square, but you know, if it's close, you have like all these lines and you need to, I mean, cutting it while they're sleeping, but. It's just a little complicated right now, but definitely something I want to get into more because I think it's just, it's so great to have, to make your own clothes. I mean, we're all knitters, so we all need our clothes and to be able also to sew them, that's like super cool. <laughs> it's kind of like make your own food, sew your own clothes, knit your own clothes, uh, build your own house, <laughs> be independent. Um, yeah. Uh, and then the last thing I want to show you is... Um, some yarn I dyed and I'm, I'm really pleased with myself. Uh, I'm really excited that I actually gave it a try. I don't know where I get, got the idea, uh, but I really wanted to try it and I did. And so what I did is, um, that's my label. I dyed some self striping yarn with natural dyes and it was very tedious and took forever, but I made it and I'm really, really happy how it turned out. Um, I have a little swatch I made, which was the funnest part of all. <laughs> so here it is. Um, the yarn on the ribbing, that's a different yarn that's um, also naturally dyed. Well, it's actually also like the blue here, it's black beans, dyed with black beans. And also this blue is dyed with black beans, but you can still see how it's totally different. I'm kind of coming to think I've tried to dye some more with black beans. That the batch of black beans I have now is it's kind of different. It was on sale, 
So I'm wondering if like something was a little wrong with them, or I don't know, maybe they oversprayed them. Or, I don't know. <laughs> I'm hoping not. But uh, yeah, and so yeah, the dye. There's. It seems like there's less dye in it. Um, I'm not sure. I'll try maybe to buy some. Maybe not organic, but different brand, or maybe organic, I don't know, <laughs> beans and see what kind of color I can get from that because um, I want it to be more stronger, more vibrant. Um, but let me show you uh, here the back side, like the pearl side. I feel like it's so, so beautiful. Like I love socks. And this, it's just so amazing. Like, especially with the thickness of the stripes, I think it looks so cool. Um, isn't, I feel like it's amazing how like from the same yarn you can get like this and the other side. It's and it's like totally two different things. Um, yeah, so I I kind of uh, learned a lot from that. So I planned it to be uh, bigger stripes and a smaller stripes. So I'll definitely try again. Um, but yeah, I definitely enjoyed it. It's really fun to knit up and see what it comes to, and it's really I feel like it's also when you just still so striping yarn, even though it's a lot of work. At the end, especially with natural dyes, you can really try how different dyes look next to each other, or even like try modify them on the same skin and have like the same um, natural dye modified, not modified, modified with different. Um, what do we call it? With different uh, means, <laughs> with different materials. Uh, you can also combine two different colors so like have one color and then combination and the next to the other color and like you can just see it all in one skein and like meet up next to each other and I feel like that's really really cool and interesting so I'm currently trying some more with other dyes I've never tried and yeah really excited about that I'll show you what comes out of it um, yeah so that's really all I wanted to share with you today <laughs> Well, all I have to share. I wish I had more. Um, I'm, unfortunately, I don't have any bread stuff uh, to share today. I did make some beetroot uh, bread, which was, it's one of my favorites. It's so beautiful. So I'll definitely try to um, take a video of that next time because it's just, it's such a beautiful color for the dough. And then when it bakes up, it's, it's really beautiful when you cut it and the way it looks inside. So stay tuned. <laughs> Watch the space. Uh, hopefully, uh, I'll have something like that to show you next time. And the finished cardigan and maybe more stuff. I definitely want to, once I finish the cardigan, I want to get more into frogging. Stuff I have, especially sweater quantities. Um, so I can figure out what I want to do next. And that it's from stash and that I have enough for it. Um, so yeah, that's definitely something I want to talk more about next time. And then I figured I have a pretty big pile of mending. Well, not big, but enough <laughs> to make, uh, to mend. So, so yeah, uh, thank you so, so much for watching uh, and I hope to see you next time. Hope you, have, hope you have a great couple of weeks and I'll see you soon. Stay warm or cool if you're in a warm place. Bye.